visitors arrived here, they were saying it looked like anything, just an empty space. It could have been a wedding venue, basically. But basically what has happened since then is with National Marine Week, it has been converted almost into an undersea exhibition. We opened up a bit earlier in front of these video walls that was just showing you some of the most beautiful visuals of the sea. And now we've just moved a little bit further into the exhibition. So we'll be able to give you a glimpse of exactly what to expect when you do come down here to this uh, National Marine Week exhibition, which is hoping to move around the country. In fact, I think it goes from here to Pretoria as well. It's going to be set up there. So uh, those uh, residents in the Gauteng area are also going to have an opportunity to see it. Now, the idea behind having National Marine Week away from an actual ocean is to show that the ocean doesn't only serve the communities by the ocean. I mean, this is the ocean has repercussions and it influences the whole entire country. And that's exactly what we're looking at now. But my next guest can give us a little bit more about this and a lot more, I can tell you that much. I'm joined now by Dr. Monde Mayakiso, who's the Deputy Director General of Oceans and Coasts at the Department of Environmental Affairs. It's always nice to see you and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be on your show. Well, I, I, the last time we were on the Orgalis and out at sea and that had to be one of the most amazing broadcasts as well. So now we've just put you next to a, a, a big backdrop that kind of explains to us what the ocean does and how much activity happens in this ocean on a daily basis. I mean, can we ever comprehend how much goes down there? Very difficult to comprehend because you can't see into the water, which is why the theme includes decoding mysteries. It's yeah. because the ocean is mysterious, simply because we can't see very far into the water. Mm -hmm. But there are wonders, there are treasures, there's everything in the ocean. Yeah, it certainly is, and that's why we need to protect them as South Africans. How are we doing in terms of uh, protecting our oceans, looking after them, and looking after our, um, our, our fish life as well? South Africa is doing very well. Uh, we may have problems, let me start with the problems, with a few fish species like abalone and rock lobster, but with big ticket species like pilchard, like hake, and so on, we're doing fairly well, yeah. which is why we, we have certification for those fisheries. So South African fisheries are relatively in good health. Yeah. Why is it the case? Because when you look at the rest of the world and many of, for instance, something like your Mediterranean seas, mm. they are crying for more fish for the fact that they are running out of fish in their oceans. And yet we're doing so well that we're actually exporting. You were telling me earlier about 80% of our hake mm. to other countries. Um, what makes us different? I would say it's uh, largely prudent management. We, we catch only what we have to catch in order for the fisheries to sustain themselves. We know 0.2% of, of the fisheries, that's all you have to take in order for the fisheries to be sustainable. And I think we've been faithful to that concept. Good. Let's talk about the, the issues of climate change and, and our oceans. The, the, the fact that they, they play um, in, in mitigating the effects of, of climate change, how? Well. <clears throat> We have to look at the fact that the ocean goes right around the world. It goes to all continents. Number one, the ocean absorbs 50% of the carbon dioxide that we produce. We think that that is not necessarily sustainable, but it does. Yeah. Secondly, it absorbs a lot of the heat that is generated also by climate change so that it doesn't get localized, so the heat gets gets distributed uniformly around the world, yeah. which, which is helpful. Yeah. Now, this National Marine Week is a great opportunity to talk about Operation uh, Pakisa, which is uh, Ocean's Economy. Talk to me about this. What, what does that actually entail? Well, only recently did we in South Africa realize that we could get more in terms of the economy from the oceans. Yeah. And South Africa is now putting great effort into improving the contribution of various sectors to the ocean economy. We've selected four priorities and, and we're going to emphasize on them so that by, by in 20 years time, the ocean contributes greatly 
yeah. to, to the economy of the country. Uh, what does it look like right now? I mean, how much does the ocean contribute? We, can, can you put a figure to it? Well, 4% to the GDP four, at, four percent. At, at the moment. And we think that can be increased to about 10% yeah. if we do the right things. So that's the potential that you see our oceans contributing to our economy? Lots of potential and we're basing this on what we've seen other, in, in other countries. Yeah, it's and also it, it is up to us as well to protect our oceans so that we can um, use it. And I know that that was one of the things that you were saying, is that people must look after the oceans. When you come visit them, look after them. The economy we're talking about will only be produced by a healthy ocean. If the ocean is messed up, we're not going to realize those economic opportunities that we think we could realize. Yeah. So it is important for us to keep the ocean uh, relatively healthy. Yeah. There's another, uh, another issue I want to talk about, and, and, and you can give me a bit of a, um, an explanation to ocean, what is it, acidification? Ocean acidification and how it affects us. Talk to me about, educate me this morning. Uh, ocean acidification simply refers to the ocean becoming more acidic than it is. And acidification arises from too much carbon dioxide reacting with water. Yeah. So CO2, those that have gone to school, CO2 plus HTO it produces carbonic acid. Yes. And what then that does is it dissolves the shells of some animals. It will dissolve corals, it will dissolve the covering of rock lobster, the covering of a balloon. So you will then miss those animals because they cannot form their shells and survive. Yeah. So ocean acidification will lead to extinction of some animals, particularly the shelled ones. Mm, mm. And that's something we need, to, we need to be aware of? Is there anything we can do to help that? Well, we, we're, I think South Africa has been quick to it. We now have monitoring stations around the country just to see how much and when the acidification happens. A lot of carbon dioxide gets absorbed in the Southern Ocean. And remember, the Southern Ocean comes up and joins the Benguela current. Yeah. So we, we are in the firing line, so to speak, to, to, to acidification. So we're keeping a watch on it. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank and when you talk about the mysteries of the ocean and how interesting it is, um, I think this, this, this exhibition can explain it to us and all of the wonders that go into the ocean and uh, how we as South Africans need to protect these amazing resources that we do have. Uh, how much of South Africa is covered in ocean? We talk about the world is covered by 70% of oceans. Is there a percentage for South Africa? Uh, we've got 3,000 kilometer coastline yes. around mainland but we also have additionally around our island in Prince Edward Island an additional EEZ yeah. and we have applied to the United Nations for extension of our economic zone so South Africa will be in the first 10 in the country if we succeed Fantastic. First 10 in the country in terms of ocean area. Wow, amazing. Thank you. So we have to protect it. We've got to look after it. Thank you so much. Dr. Mundi Mayokiso, who is the Deputy Director General of Oceans and Coasts at the Department of Environmental Affairs. Let's take a break. We'll see you after this.